In the depths of antiquity, a sinister practice emerged, casting a shadow of fear and dread over the civilizations of the ancient Near East. It was a method of execution known as impalement, a chilling eyesore designed to strike terror into the hearts of wrongdoers and dissuade others from following their treacherous paths. As time passed, its chilling dark influence continued to spread, enveloping numerous ancient cities and eras in its ominous grasp, leaving a scar on the souls of those unfortunate enough to witness its gruesome sight. Join us as we explore the darkest chronicles of history, uncovering tales of all those who had suffered this dark fate, rulers filled with human cruelty, and cities tainted with its darkness. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. An Ancient Execution Impalement was an ancient execution method that entailed piercing the human body with a stake, pole, spear, or hook, often leading to complete or partial penetration of the torso. Alongside other forms of capital punishment, impalement found frequent use during warfare, suppressing rebellions and punishing traitors, armed robbers, and murderers. Historical records have provided numerous instances of individuals being impaled throughout various civilizations and eras. One notable account comes from the 17th century merchant Jean de Devenant, who was an eyewitness provided a first-hand description of this gruesome execution in Egypt. Thevenot recounted the case of a man sentenced to death for employing false weights. According to Thevenot, the horrifying execution typically commenced with a condemned individual lying face down, his hands securely bound behind his back. The condemned awaited his dreadful fate in a state of helplessness and defenselessness. The executioners, armed with a razor, were poised to make a deep incision in the man's posterior. The pain inflicted upon the condemned surpassed all imagination. As blood flowed from the wound, a prepared paste was swiftly poured into it to stem the bleeding. However, applying the paste was not an act of mercy, but rather a deliberate endeavor to prolong the suffering of the condemned. Yet. The torment did not end with the application of the paste. Displaying a chilling display of sadistic ingenuity, the executioners prepared a lengthy and sturdy stake as thick as the man's arms, which was greased and sharpened to a menacing point. With forceful blows from a mallet, the executioners drove the stake into the man's body, piercing his flesh mercilessly until it emerged from his chest head or shoulders. The condemned soul, elevated upon the stake, was left exposed to nature's elements for an entire day. Now let's go back in time to the cities, rulers, and victims of this horrific execution method. Vlad the Tyrant Impaler In the enigmatic 15th century Romania, a prince named Vlad III resided. Still, history has etched a more ominous name upon his memory, Dracula. This enigmatic figure ruled over the land of Wallachia, yet he was no ordinary noble leader. Born in 1423 to Vlad II Dracul of Wallachia, Vlad III's path to power was anything but smooth. It was a rather tumultuous journey marred by tragedy and betrayal. In 1442, Vlad and his younger brother Radu were taken as hostages in the Ottoman Empire to ensure their father's loyalty. The death of his father and elder brother in 1447 at the hands of John Hunyadi, the regent governor of Hungary, added further turmoil to Vlad's life. 
Hunyadi invaded Wallachia and installed Vlad's second cousin, Vladislav II, as the new voivode, causing Vlad to seek refuge in the Ottoman Empire. In a brief period in 1448, Vlad III assumed the throne, ruling for a month before being forced into exile. This harrowing experience filled Vlad III's heart with a deep-seated hatred and anger towards those who had slain his family. As the second son and heir to the throne, Vlad inherited his father's enemies and became the target of relentless pursuit. Despite the obstacles, he managed to reclaim control of Wallachia in 1456. Once back in power, Vlad unleashed wrath upon those who had wronged his family or taken advantage of his land's misfortunes. Among his arsenal of cruel methods, one in particular would forever associate his name with terror, impalement. After successfully avenging his family's deaths, Vlad became consumed by his status and power. No one was safe from his wrath as the dreadful act of impalement became his signature. Various groups within his realm faced the extended use of capital punishment under Vlad's rule. Saxon settlers, rival clans, and even common criminals found themselves at the mercy of his merciless impalement. Both high-ranking nobles and humble peasants lived in constant fear of displeasing their prince, for the consequences were undeniably dire. Yet, during the campaigns against the invading Ottoman Turks, Vlad's reputation for cruelty would reach its zenith. In a desperate attempt to assassinate the Ottoman Sultan, he orchestrated the infamous night of attack of Vlad Tepes in mid-June 1462, but ultimately failed. In the aftermath, the road to Targa Vista, the capital of Vlad's principality, transformed into a haunting landscape. It became inundated with a forest of 20,000 impaled and decaying corpses. Reports suggest that upon encountering the gruesome sight of a thousand impaled corpses along the Danube River, Mehmed II's invading Turkish army returned to Constantinople in 1462. The Impalement Era of the Siege of Constantinople in the early days of 1453, during the medieval ages, a grand city known as Constantinople found itself amidst an epic siege. The mighty Ottoman Empire, driven by the desire to conquer this illustrious city, resorted to gruesome tactics, notably the frightful practice of impalement. Yet, this brutal method was not solely reserved for the final assault. Even before the siege began, Impalement was employed to instill fear and assert control. In the year leading up to the siege, Sultan Mehmed II commanded that all ships passing through the Bosphorus must submit to inspection at his fortress. However, one defiant Venetian captain, Antonio Rizzo, dared to challenge this ban. Regrettably, his defiance was met with a swift and merciless response from Sultan Mehmed II as a cannonball struck Rizzo's ship, casting him and his crew into the unforgiving waters. As the account of Niccolo Barbaro describes, the crew members met gruesome fates, either by beheading or the horrific act of being sawn asunder. However, Rizzo suffered an even more horrifying destiny, impalement. As the siege commenced in May 1453, the Ottoman army proceeded to conquer smaller nearby fortifications such as Therapia and Studium. Once these locations surrendered, the most unfortunate soldiers, around 40 individuals from each, were condemned to impalement. Such was the bleak and savage reality that unfolded during those faithful days of the siege in Constantinople. Centuries later, Constantinople would again witness a gruesome massacre by impalement. This event would shake the world and inscribe a darker history in the hearts of the Greeks. In April 1821, during this difficult period, a German observer recounted the horrifying sight of approximately 65 Greeks being subjected to impalement by a furious Turkish mob. 
According to the German Observer, among the victims stood Athanasios Diakos, a celebrated cleft, known as a Greek guerrilla fighter who had risen to become a military commander for the rebel forces. However, following the Battle of Almana in 1821, Diakos was captured near Thermopylae and was faced with a cruel ultimatum to convert to Islam and join the Ottoman army. But Diakos defiantly refused. As a consequence, he met a tragic fate of impalement. The Gruesome Impalement of Pavel Vysansky Centuries ago in the small town of Ivankais, nestled in what is now the Czech Republic, a notorious figure named Pavel Vysansky cast a dark shadow over the pages of history. His story, filled with darkness and horror, continues reverberating through times and owls. However, in 1570, this feared wandering armed robber, Pavel Vysansky, fell on the wrong side of luck and met his capture. The exact details of his apprehension and the methods used to extract his confessions have been lost to the sands of time. However, the chilling accounts of the era still bear witness to his ultimate punishment. On that fateful day, the 1st of March, 1570, Pavel Vysansky was condemned to death by impalement, a form of execution reserved for the most heinous criminals. The specifics of his impalement were not revealed to him, leaving him in dread anticipation of his fate. Little did he know that his punishment would exceed the boundaries of human imagination, plunging him into an even greater realm of suffering. According to historical reports, Vysansky's execution was a harrowing affair meticulously designed to inflict unimaginable pain and torment. The torturous process commenced with severing his limbs, symbolically severing his power and dominance over others. This act alone would have caused excruciating agony, but his tormentors did not stop there. They resorted to further cruelty, employing glowing pincers to rip off his nipples, adding to his unbearable suffering. Yet the ordeal was far from its conclusion. The method of flaying was employed, stripping away the very skin from Vysansky's body, exposing raw flesh to the cruel gaze of onlookers. The intention behind this gruesome act was clear, to degrade him, to strip him of his humanity, and to serve as a dire warning to all who witnessed his heinous crimes. Finally, in a final act of indescribable horror, a sharpened stake pierced his body, a deliberate method chosen to prolong his torment. As his life force gradually drained from him, flames were ignited, engulfing him in a fire. He was left to endure the slow agony of being roasted alive, his cries echoing through the dark corridors of history. So, what are your thoughts on this punishment? Let us know in the comment section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and amazing stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.